Hey guys, welcome to your second Xcode tutorial. Here we're just going to do a little more complex application that takes some user input and uh, we'll do some error checking too. So let's get started with a new project and we're going to do a single view application. I will name mine second tutorial and create. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head to the storyboard and uh, start dragging some objects onto our view. Alright, so let's get a label up top. There we go. Bring it up here and we'll make it a little bigger. Let's change it to center just so it looks nice. We'll make it size 20 font and we'll give it a few lines just because some of our output might not fit on just one line. Next we're going to go right here to this object. This is a text field and all it does is it allows the user to edit text and enter text in this field and we're going to have them enter a number. No, oh no, we'll put it on the left and then We'll click this checkbox right here to clear when editing begins because once this begins editing, we want this enter number to disappear. And we're going to go back to the label. Uh, I want to add a background just to show how large it is on this white screen. So we go down to view, background, we'll make it a light gray. There we go. All right, next we're going to take this, which is a segment controller. Basically, you can either choose first or second, but we want to change that. So right up here in our attributes inspector, it says segment zero first. We're going to change it to zero just for now. And then segment one will change to one. And next, we'll drag a button at the bottom and we'll name it go. So basically, our goal here is to have the user enter a number, choose either zero or one, and then click go and it will show the multiplication of the two numbers. So let's click our little bow tie uh, editor so we can add some connections. Let's go to recent files dot h has nothing in there right now so we'll give it an outlet for the label outlet for the text field, outlet for the segmented control, we'll put, yeah, seg control, and an outlet, well actually an action for our button when it's pressed. Alright, so now we have all these connected but it's still not going to do anything because we haven't implemented it. So we go down to button pressed and what we want is we want the text field to multiply by the segmented control value. So we'll say int text field number equals, and then we'll put two brackets. Here's our text field variable. Remember we use an underscore because it's an instance variable. It just means it's a variable of this class. And we're going to type out text because this first bracket we're getting the text field text value and in the second bracket we're going to get the int value. And there we go. Now we have the int value of text field number. And next we're going to get the segmented control integer value and so we'll say int seg control number equals and we only need one for this. We're going to go s underscore seg control and then selected segment index and basically there's two indexes if we go back to storyboard and select this we have index 0 which we titled 0 and index 1 which we titled 1 so it's going to return either 0 or 1 and that's that just makes it simple for us so now we have our two integers and we want to multiply them so let's have final int uh, we'll have actually a string uh, now we'll make it an int. Output number. 
times seg control. There we go. So there's that, and then we're going to make a ns string, which is just a string object output. Whoops. You need to, because it's an object, you need to put a pointer here just to point to that object in memory. And we're going to say ns string, string with format, percent a, percent i, comma, output number. There we go. And this is just giving this output this percent i value, which we delegated to be output number. So now output has this value, but in string format. And so finally, we go text. Whoops, we go label dot text equals output. And so that should do everything, but it won't do, it won't run perfectly, and you'll see why in a second. So let's run this. All right, here's our screen. So we have our label and our text field and everything else. So we'll click on our text field to enter a number. Let's say 22. That's a great number. And now we want to work on everything else, but this keyboard is not going away. And so that's the problem I knew we'd run into. So what we have to do is we have to add another action to our implementation so that when we click on the background, this keyboard will be dismissed. So the first thing we do is we'll go over to our viewcontroller.h file and we're going to add this IB action. Whoops. IB action background tap. And it's going to be ID sender. Now we go to our M file. Oh, let's copy this. Go to our M. And now we have to give it uh, its implementation, which is just going to be self.view and editing is yes. Basically what this does is it tells, uh, it acts on its own view and it says end editing yes, which will basically end editing is a method that will tell the keyboard it's done, so it'll dismiss it and that should work, but first since it has no connection we could see right here this is empty, which means it's not connected to anything. We need to go back to our storyboard and connect it. But in order to do that, we can't be in custom class UI view. So click on your background, and it'll show in this third tab, custom class UI view. That won't work for our background tab. We need to change it to UI control. And so once it's UI control, we click on this background go to this final tab here, which is the connections, and it will show all these connections that we could make, and we're going to say touch down, we're going to drag that to background tab. There we go. So let's just see if that's running correctly. All right. Let's go 22, click the background. There we go, it dismisses it. Now we could either multiply it by 1, which gives us 22, or 0, which gives us 0. So that's pretty good, but you probably thinking, why multiply by 1 and 0? A little too simple. So what we're going to do next is we're going to change 0 and 1 to multiply by 5 and 10, or we could do fractions if you want, or decimals, but we'll just make it 5 and 10. So we'll head over to our .m, and right here, where we grab the value of the segmented control, we're going to say if seg control, whoops, seg control number equals zero, we're going to give seg control number the value of five. Else, and since it's uh, this segmented control is either enabled on one side or the other all the time, it's never both or neither. So we could say if it's 0, we'll just set it to 5, else it's going to be 1, so we'll set it to 10. We don't even need to say else if. All right, so that'll change it to 5 and 10, but now we want our display to also say 5 and 10, so we'll go over to Attributes Inspector, Segment 1, we want it to be 10, 
Segment 0, we want it to be 5. Oh, it didn't change. Whoops. Got to press Enter. All right. So now we have that changed. It'll multiply by 5 and 10. So let's give it a test. All right. Enter a number, 33. Multiply by 5, get 165 by 10. 330 works like a charm. So now, what could possibly go wrong? This is called error checking. We're trying to find if anything the user could do that would screw this up. And one thing is if they put in a letter, it's going to change it to zero. And the reason it does that and it doesn't like give us an error is because when we do this right here, text field text, it would say the letter G, so this will be G, and this is int value. And since G is not an integer, it's going to give it the value null. But when you give the value null to an integer, it assigns zero to that integer. So that's basically null value for integers is the number zero. So now that we have that, we need to figure out what to do if the user enters a letter. And I think the best thing to do is another kind of if statement. First, we're going to put is no, oh, sorry, bool is null equals false. And basically, we're just saying by default, it is not null. So we're saying the text field is not null by default. Next, we're going to write if text field number equals 0 is null equals true. If or else is null equals false. So now that we have this, we know whether it is either null or it is a good value. So down in the output, we're going to say if is null equals true. You could also just have this as if is null, just without this equals true, because it would be the same thing. But I just do that for clarity. So if is null equals true, we want label to dot text equal to the string, we'll say error enter a number greater than zero. No letters, dude. We're just assuming it's a dude. And if it's n not null, if the value is good, we'll output the regular output. So this should check for the main errors you'd get with this. Let's say, let's input s, error, enter a number. All right, let's enter a number. 110, perfect. This app works like a charm. Now just sell it to Apple and make some money. All right, that should conclude this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll probably go over images and a few other of these objects, like these two, I think switchers and sliders would be a good start. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.